Welcome to the keynote. Streams of mercy never ceasing. Call for some of the loudest praise. North Star International is wholly independent of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints. It does not receive funding or direction from the church. The following content should not be interpreted as official statements of church doctrine, beliefs, or practices. North Star International does not take a position regarding any specific therapy, including reparative or conversion therapy, SOCE. North Star International is not a therapeutic organization. It is a peer-led, lay religious support ministry. Our focus is to support individuals as they seek to align their lives with gospel principles and as disciples of Jesus Christ. So, as you may have surmised, um, I'm being released. Uh, my, my term as president has come to an end after almost three years. Um, it is the normal rotation of things in North Star. And I will tell you that when I was asked to be president, um, I brought what hopefully was a great deal of professional experience in how to organize um, organizations and especially nonprofits. And we've been able to do a great deal um, in the infrastructure and the planning and such um, with the organization. And it is, as I said, one of the greatest blessings of my life. Um, I'm not going anywhere, I just get bumped to the board um, and I'm gonna be focusing specifically on making money or getting money. I don't wanna make it, I just wanna get it from you. Um, <laughs> So working with Ryan Warnick, we're putting, we put together um, really good messaging around who we are and what we're trying to accomplish. And we're going to foundations and other people with lots of money and say, hey, we're really cool, give us money. We do good stuff. Um, so I will still be here. But I will tell you that one of the things that I began to do the couple of days after I became president was started looking for the next one. Um, and I will tell you, because the succession really matters, um, as you have probably experienced, there's been different kinds of succession of leadership at North Star and trying to keep the momentum and having the same strategy. And that's a, that's a process that's really important for nonprofits. And I feel like we've really gotten there. Um, we actually have decided to put together a presidency um, as opposed to having the weight on just a president and the new president who I will soon announce will talk about the presidency. Um, but it is with great satisfaction and joy um, that I pass the choice, uh, the torch of president to one of the most Christ-like, kindest persons I've ever known. Um, has taught me a great deal about what it means to be um, a husband and even a father now that Becky and I have a child. Um, we'll tell you the story about that sometime. Um, but I have learned more about what it means to seek the Lord's counsel from this man than from most people in my life. So it is with great honor that I introduce the next president, Spencer Thompson. How are you supposed to speak following all this stuff? I'm already an emotional mess, so thank you, Ben. <laughs> um, holy cow. Um, I always ask God, why me? <laughs> you know, um, there could be so many people up here doing this instead of me. And uh, it's an honor and a privilege to be in this room with you. Just um, there's sacred space here, and it's a, it's, it's a beautiful thing to walk this path with all of you. Um, it's a path I never wanted to walk in my life. I think most of you can relate to that. You're pleading with God in prayers of, take this away, God, I don't want this. Um, and God has a different plan. Um, but I, it's, it's my honor and privilege to, to step into this role and to fill the shoes of Bennett. He truly is one of my heroes. Um, him and his amazing wife, Becky, I just love deeply. All the previous leaders, President of, presidents of North Star, all dear friends. I just, I walk on the shoulders of giants with all of them, and I feel extremely humbled and terrified and overwhelmed, um, but I feel God is with me, and God is with all of us, and I'm so, I'm, I'm just honored. Um, and so Bennett said, we have, a, we have a leadership structure, and we're going to talk about that more 
this afternoon when the new leadership is announced. But Jeff Case, an amazing man, is going to be um, executive vice president with me, or senior vice president. Liv Mendoza Haynes is going to be the, um, I hate all these phrases, I can't remember what they even mean. Executive vice president, I think I said that. But there's a senior and an executive. And then um, Ryan Warnick is a VP of marketing. And we have a whole other team we'll announce later this afternoon. But just honored and privileged. Um, when I was asked to step into this role, it was back in October, and um, I kind of felt it coming, but I kept being like, no, 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 that's not going to be me. Um, but then I felt it come, and I was asked in October to step in this role. It was a couple weeks before General Conference. And so I went into General Conference um, with a prayer, saying, okay, God, if you want me to do this, show me what you need me to do. And the very first talk that was given was by Elder Holland. And it was all on everything, I can't remember the name of the talk, but if you look, Saturday morning, general conference of him, it's, it was a talk, it was all about everything we do in the church should point to our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so I said, oh, there's my answer. I think we can get caught in the weeds of so many things in regards to issues around LGBT and all that comes with that, but when we point to him, when we keep our focus on him, it makes it possible. And that's my message that is what I feel that we need to keep doing with the North Star is point people to him. He's the answer. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. That's how he has become my answer. Um, so I'm a nerd. I love, um, I love Christian radio. Um, Caleb's on my radio all the time. Um, but it's great. There's a song on there that, that had really struck my soul recently. And it's a song called Nobody by Casting Crowns. And I'm just going to share the words of the first verse. And it says, why you ever chose me has always been a mystery. All my life, I've been told I belong at the end of a line. With all the other not quites, with all the never get it rights, but it turns out they are the ones you were looking for all this time. Because I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody all about somebody who saved my soul. Ever since you rescued me, you gave my heart a song to sing. I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. So I'm just a nobody who's become somebody because of him. And that's my message. Um, I've, been in the, I've been in the thick of this, as many of you are here today, where I felt so overwhelmed, burdened, pleading with God, take this away. I work as a physical therapist who works with people who have had an amputation or been paralyzed, and I was envious of them at a time because I thought, you have it easier than me. That was just me being so self-centric, but um, I didn't think that it was possible to move forward with knowing that same-sex attraction was a part of my life. I thought, how can I do this? Initially, I thought, okay, I'll just pray, and God will take this away. That was the easy road. I didn't, that is not what God intended. God intended for me to get to know this man while living with same-sex attraction. Um, so I've done a lot of therapy over the years, and it's been all very healing. Um, but I want to share a piece of art that I created um, in doing some art therapy. And the, late, the therapist that helped me do this, I invited her to be today. Her, uh, she, her name is Mary Altridge, and she's just an amazing woman and therapist. And this is my beautiful wife, who's just my lovely assistant. She's, she's amazing. We love her so much. <laughs> Um, we were actually in doing some couples therapy because we've had to face a lot um, in marriage. And she is a rock. Um, and I love her. And we've had to face a lot, um, as all of us are here. And so we were meeting with our therapist and said, Spencer, I think you need to go do some more individual therapy about how you're doing in regards to your same-sex attraction. And I'm open to all kinds of therapy. So I said, sure. And she said, it's experiential therapy. It's called art therapy. I said, okay, so I signed up, and I went, and I met with Mary, and we had some great conversations and started working through some of my emotions through art, which is a beautiful process. And I think it kind of led to this moment where I created this, this painting. You're probably thinking, like, what on earth is this? <laughs> I'll tell you. Um, so just like all of us, I think we have all faced a lot of shame, loneliness, rejection, fear, isolation, um, depression, doubt, insecurities, all these things. 
um, in regards to our gender identity, our sexuality, being a parent of a child who is gay, um, uh, a parent of a trans individual, a church leader trying to walk this path. I think all of us face these moments of, I don't know what to do, and it can feel dark and heavy. Well, I was facing these moments with Mary in her office. And so she said, okay, what color is all of that? And so the, the, the things we used in this, this is the painting um, that I actually have framed in our house, and there's a funny story about how we got that framed. But um, we, I started exploring all these emotions with her, and it, she said, what's the color? And, and I said, it was blue. And these are watercolor pens. Um, so I started to sit with those emotions of the blue. All the heartache, all the loneliness, the, the doubt, the insecurity, all those things I just mentioned were coming to the surface for me. And I just sat there and I colored this blue. And I sat with it and I emoted and it was good. But she said, okay, now what do you want to do with that? And so I closed my eyes and what I saw was light. And I saw Jesus there. And uh, that yellow is him, is his light. And so she said, okay, start coloring that. And so on the opposite side, I started coloring that yellow. And what I did is I progressed it towards the blue. And what happens when you combine blue and yellow, it makes green. And so I combined those two colors together, and it wasn't me coloring green, it was the combining of the two, and that's an important factor here. It was combining Christ's light and his love in with the blue to make green. And what green is, to me, it, it, symbol, it symbolized life, newness. You can see that sprouting up, newness in him. That's what I'm here to testify of, is when we can take all of that that we're feeling and combine that with him, we can experience newness of life in a way we have not before but it's an active process of letting him into those spaces with us, combining those colors together. And you can see in that painting, it's not just green, it's blue and um, yellow together making that color. So how do we do this? This is a wrestle. It's not an easy process, but I promise you it is possible. I'm here to testify that. Um, how we do this is we invite Christ in. It's an active process. I'm going to share a quote from this book. He's one of my favorite Christian authors. His name is John Eldridge. This is from a new book he wrote called Getting Your Life Back. But it says, in the past, when I became aware of something in my soul, needing his touch, mercy, or deep healing, I would bring it to Jesus in prayer and ask him to do so. The results were mixed. Sometimes it worked, sometimes not. During a road trip to Montana, Jesus began to show me something quite helpful. We can't stand at a distance from our own soul and ask Christ to go in there and deal with it. This isn't hostage negotiation. We don't hide a block away and hope God takes care of business. This is your own soul we're talking about. The door opens from the inside. I stand at the door knock, Jesus explained. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in. We open the door to our soul from the inside. This is the purpose of naming the loss feeling it, allowing ourselves to return to the place in our own being that we walked away from. We must enter these places ourselves, the memory, the emotion, whatever it is we are aware of, we inhabit our own soul again. Jesus insists on it. Once there, we open the door from the inside, inviting Christ in, which he is always eager to do so. And I love that. Sometimes we have to get vulnerable ourselves in order to experience deeper healing with him. I think all of us have things in our lives that we're maybe scared to touch or scared to go to, a pain we don't want to tap into yet. But I promise you, when you get real with yourself, Christ can get real with you because you can open that door to him from the inside of you. It gives him more access to you and more access to deeper healing. I testify that. So how does Christ do this? How can we trust a man with these deep places of our souls I love uh, Come Follow Me this year and the focus on, um, I love reading Second Nephi lately. It's been so powerful. And I love when it says, um, behold the condescensions of God. There's a scripture in D&C 88.6 that says, he that ascended up on high, also as also he descended below all things, in that he comprehended all things, that he might be in and all through all things the light of truth. Christ can do this because he has descended below all things. 
He has condescended below any pain, loneliness, depression, discouragement, suicidality, anything that we have experienced. He has descended below all of that. And why? So that he can raise us up. The way you pick something up is you have to get down below it and pick it up. He's the one that has the power to do that. Trust him with that. I promise you, there is power in that. Allow Christ to be the soil beneath your feet that gives you nourishment and groundedness so you can grow. Just like in that painting, let Christ be your soil, the most fertile soil on earth that can allow you to keep growing and moving forward. I promise you that is true. One of the things I love about Christ is when we take all of this to him, he doesn't just help us move forward. There is joy to be found. I testify of that. There were some dark moments for me. When I started to come to terms with same-sex attraction, I was scared to death. I felt no hope. I thought, how can I do this? Why did God allow this to be a part of my life? But as I've had moments with him, I've also experienced some of the deepest joys of my life. I testify to you that there is joy coming. Stick with him. He'll stick with you. Joy will come. Um, I'm going to paraphrase a few scriptures from 3 Nephi 17 to talk about this. And this is when Christ came to the Americas and spent time with those living in the Americas. Um, This is in 3 Nephi 17, verses 15 through 20. I'm going to paraphrase a few of this. And it said, And when he had said these words, um, he himself also knelt upon the earth. And behold, he prayed unto the Father, and the things which he prayed could not be written. And the multitude did be record who heard him. So right before this, he invited them to kneel down. And why I mention this right here, he knelt down with them. He didn't stand above them. He came down to their level. Christ can come down to your level and be with you. I've experienced that. I testify that. A little later, it says, No one can conceive of the joy which filled our souls at the time we heard him pray for us unto the Father. So great was the joy of the multitude that they were overcome. Their interactions with Christ led to joy. Your interaction with Christ, allowing him into these spaces with you, inviting him in, it can lead to joy, just like it did for them, just like it has for me, just like it has for all of us. doesn't mean I'm joyful all the time, but I've experienced deep joy. With Christ, you can. And then I love this. It says in verse 20, And he said unto them, Blessed are ye because of your faith. And now behold, my joy is full. Christ takes joy in serving us, in raising us up. We are his why. Each one of us are Jesus' why. He is that personal. 2 Nephi 33.6 says, um, Behold my Jesus. He is your Jesus. Let him be your, let yourself be his why. Why he went through all he went through. He did it for you. He did it for me. He did it for all of us. There's power in that. Um, I'm going to share some personal experiences of how I've come to know him. And as I was preparing this talk, it's been, I mean, it's on my mind for a long time. Um, But I read 3 Nephi 17. And this is a couple weeks ago. And I've been trying to implement meditation, mindfulness into my daily routine every morning. I get up early before anybody's awake so I can just have some time for myself. I'm terrible at it sometimes, but I'm working on it. Um, But when I do, it's powerful. So I I, I read this scripture and I felt Jesus tell to me, Spencer, I am people's why. And I closed my eyes and I felt him there with me. And I saw him carry me. And we were both, he was experiencing joy, I was experiencing joy. And he told me, Spencer, Keep letting me carry you. And then he said, I want to carry more. I can carry all of them if they'll let me. Let Jesus carry you. Don't let yourself get in the way of him carrying you. I promise you, that is why he came. And he takes joy in it. He takes joy in being with you. Another experience. I woke up, kind of. this is a couple months ago, just kind of feeling rotten about myself, feeling like a, kind of like a failure. I always, one of my negative beliefs that I have worked a lot through, that I still have to work through, is never being enough. And so I was sitting with this, like just some heavy emotions, and I once again, I, I spent some time in silent meditation with him. 
and I felt him come to me. He didn't say anything. I didn't have to do anything. He just came and started to wash my feet. Sat with me. Are we taking time to let Jesus come sit with us, sit with you? I think sometimes we can get, we can get in our own way of connecting with him, of I have to do so many certain things in order to qualify love from Jesus. No, stop that if you're doing that. That's not true. He can come sit with you, be with you wherever you're at. Just All you have to do is just invite him. And he'll come, I promise. And maybe he'll come. He comes to all of us in different ways. He's that individual. We just have to invite him in and sit with him. Um, another, another thought, two more. So I loved Gainalyn Conde. I invited her to come hear me speak. She's become a dear friend. And I loved her talk last year she gave about walking on water. It really impacted me. And so I, um, same thing, I spent some time in meditation. But when I was doing this, after she spoke, I imagined myself walking on water. I think all of us here, like I love what she said, we're all water walkers. We're all doing things that sometimes seem impossible. But what happened, I would see myself walking on water, and Christ was always there with me. And what kept me going walking on water was keeping my eyes focused on him. And when I would steer, when I would, my eyes would go away, or I'd be focused on distractions or things around, I would start to sink. But he came right there and he helped pick me back up. And what he told me was, Spencer, let me train you in how to walk with me. Um, my kids, we're all into Star Wars right now, and I feel like there's so many gospel messages in Star Wars. Um, I never thought I'd be a Star Wars nerd, but I've kind of become a Star Wars nerd. <laughs> and, um, my little boy is obsessed with Yoda, and we have fun with it. But um, I, I, when I did this, I envisioned kind of like how Yoda is training Luke how to use the force. Christ can train us how to be with him. That may sound kind of obscure, but think about that. Christ can train us how to use his atonement if we ask him. Let him train you how to more fully utilize him. My last thought, and tell me if you go to the next picture. I forgot to have this go, but um, I found this picture a couple of days ago, and it just fits so perfectly with that painting that I created. Um, it's Christ, and I want you to imagine yourself as the lamb interacting with Christ. Think about what you need from him in this moment and the rest of this conference, and as you move forward, what do you need from him? Notice how he's there meeting the lamb exactly as the lamb is, and it's flooded with yellow light, healing light, and above that is those green mountains. Um, this last thought I had, so I did a fifth Sunday in my ward three, four years ago. Um, I felt very called to. I've had an, ama an amazing bishop, have an amazing bishop. He's here today, very thankful for him. But we, we had a conversation about, let's talk about this more. And so we did a fifth Sunday. It was around compassion, but I shared my, my experience of same-sex attraction in that with the, um, under the umbrella of how do we love people more fully as Christ does. It was a vulnerable experience, sharing stuff from the heart like that with your ward. It's a very vulnerable crowd. But I felt very called to, and everybody was so loving and supportive. But I struggled after. Um... I didn't want to go to church for a bit because I thought I just bared my soul and it was scary. <laughs> it's easy to talk over the pulpit, but then the daily interactions, that's where it can get hard. And so I didn't want to go to church for a couple, for a while actually, but I did. I went, um, but that first Sunday after, I, it was time for Elders Quorum and I was like, I can't go do this. And so I didn't. I said, I, um, and I went on a walk. It was a beautiful October day and I went on a walk. And I went on a walk with God. And I said, God, how can I go to a place where I feel people don't fully get me? It's scary. Maybe some of you get that, showing up when you feel people don't fully understand you. I get it. But what God told me is for all of you here today, too. He said, Spencer, they don't have to get you because I get you. That was the most powerful truth, and it has stuck with me ever since. When I'm feeling lost or confused or feeling like I have to prove myself to get acceptance or whatever, I come back to that. I get you. The creator of the universe gets me. The creator of the universe gets all of us. Let that be 
a core root of your identity. God gets you wherever you're at. He loves you wherever you're at. I just want to bear my testimony um, of the reality of our Savior, Jesus Christ. He's here with us. He's here in this room today. I can feel him. Let him into your heart. Be still and come to know him. I promise you miracles await. I love you all. I'm honored to be here with you on this journey as we all keep to striving to figure this out, but we can't do it without him. So my challenge to all of you is don't do it without him. Your Savior, Jesus Christ. He loves you. I love him. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.